I managed to get this character to level 30. Pretty cool. Looks like somebody is going to run R4 Isle of Dread. I might do that. I guess it depends on whether a lot of other people join that group. While we wait to see, let's see if there's anybody dead. Oh, there's a couple. Don't have that much renown into this level, so. That affected us. Not really. Uh, if Firestorm took a saga, though, that could... 27,000, depending on. I'm going to hold off removing him until we get a little bit But we can promote these people. So nobody's joining that group. We'll keep our eye on it. We'll go to the market and look and see. I'm still hunting a ring. Doubt I'll be able to find it, but you never know. I see there's a lot of people. Oh, right. There won't be a lot of stuff on these vendors because the servers were down that could be why there aren't a lot of people makes sense yeah i forgot about that every wednesday they reset the servers everything gets deleted Nothing good. Sometimes you can find good clickies on these. So there's nobody joining that R4 group yet, which makes me think that nobody is online. Is at that level right now? Bunch of people doing the orchard. Couple people doing Delara.
pretty cool. Yeah, we need more renown before I can remove some people. I've been hunting an artifact on this character. I still have not found one. It's so frustrating. Don't understand why they're so difficult to find. Okay, we'll take a look. So, I'm looking for the Ring of the Kraken. It can drop from any dust out here. So far, so good. So far, we've got both rares. So the ring can drop. It's an artifact, so it can drop from any chest. But, no, I've had, like, the worst luck. So, we did get a rare filigree. That's cool, but... Super frustrating. This character doesn't have an artifact on at all, so... I did loot one that has wisdom, but I don't want to use it because it won't really benefit me at all. Oh, this rare's up too. That's great. Yeah, so we're having good luck with the rares. And... A whole lot of nothing. Let's see if we can get the giant. Maybe. Giant up? No. Giant. I think I'm getting really close to ransacking this, this chest, though. We'll see. Commands a fine view of the sea. Yet, for some reason, and with artifacts, you can't feeling. like loot them on another character because they're bound to character, so can't trade them. Okay, well, I got a salt pearl. So it says that I've looted this four times. Okay, so I, and you ransack at eight, so pretty good. I'm already wearing the epic version of this, so this is actually an upgrade. For good. Okay, no crocodile. Crocodile is not there. I actually really like this uh, zone. The Salt Marsh. Really good expansion. Don't have it. I highly recommend it. 
gear is great, the quests are fun, the writing is good. And they did a really good job at recreating that classic module. Speaking of, I really hope that they decide to give us the Expedition to the Barrier Peaks as an expansion for this game. I know they won't do it this year because they're doing Myth Draenor, but it would be really cool. It's my favorite module. I absolutely love it. People are like, oh, no, you can't because there's, you know, power armor and laser guns. Well, we already have Searing Light, which clerics can spam, and it looks like a laser beam. So all they need to do is basically make a wand of Searing Light that looks like a gun that any character can use, basically. already in the game it's not like it would break the game uh, you know clerics can cast searing light favorite souls can cast searing light so we did really good on the on the early rares but we just passed four or five locations that were empty Oh, but we did get the Bullywug. This is good, because he's super rare. Usually don't see him. It'd be really nice to get an artifact. I've only looted that chest twice. You come across a cute statue of a giant frog. It seems to be made of they added, you're wondering how I know that, they added under, um, you go to your options, gameplay, you can click on all these things and one of them gives you the, uh, there's like a, a chest notification. Actually, I'm not sure if it's in here. Oh, there it is. Enable detailed chest information right there. You click that on. Then it'll tell you how often you've looted a chest. Something else that's really interesting, too, that I'll show you guys is that you, if you play on the Hardcore League or with anybody, you'll probably see people when they are running... Uh, they're running and they're tumbling, which I can do. I don't do it that often just because uh, this can, this is part of a new thing they added. And that's also in this. You have to have this experimental tumble control clicked on. And it lets you tumble while you run. It's definitely handy. It's definitely cool. So I'm glad that they added it, but... I haven't really worked it into my playstyle yet because I play on a controller. But I do see a lot of people who play with like a mouse and keyboard doing it. So in case you were wondering, why is everybody tumbling now? Is it like a new thing? There's something I don't know. It's probably because they have that enabled. Does it make you faster? Yeah, it does. If you are really good at clicking your tumble, Quickly, you can make yourself run faster than you normally would. So, it is a way to move faster in the game. So, a lot of people do it for that reason. There are some abilities that you can get that activate when you tumble, so it's even better. You know, if you have some classes can like uh, gain evasion when they tumble and there's a couple of races that get benefits when they tumble. I think deep gnomes can spec so they can pass through things when they tumble.
So they said they were adding a dragon themed archetype. That's very interesting. I wonder what exactly that means, like how they will implement that. You know, because we already have Dragonborn, right? Like we have that as a race. And I don't know if there's any sort of a subclass that's based on a dragon, except unless you go into like Dragonlance. My understanding is Dragonlance is off limits though, because it's in a lawsuit. So the I think they're allowed to make video games right now, Dragonlance. I might be wrong about the detail of why, but I think it's because it's there's some legal issue with uh, Dragonlance right now. We could probably Google it and find out. We probably should. It is one of the better worlds for Dungeons and Dragons, I think. If Forgotten Realms is like the most popular, then Dragonlance is probably close second. People really like it. I really like it. I have all the Dragonlance. You know, I found at a flea market all the old modules, so I have them all. And um, I have some of the paperback books. I've read the paperback books. They're pretty good. Definitely worth reading, although it's been a while since I've read them, so they may be better in my memory than they actually are in reality, but I think they're pretty good. I read the Menzo Berenzen, the Drizzt Warden books as well, like Homeland and Exile and all those, and when I first read them, I loved them, but I tried to read them again, and I just couldn't do it. Like, they, for me personally, I just couldn't. Something about the writing was just too. So I've sort of changed as a reader, I think. But when I first read them, I really liked them. And I think that's. Everybody likes those, right? I mean, he's one of the most popular characters, so. Certainly good. Uh, but I wonder if they're going to Myth Draenor if they will include any of that stuff because in the Forgotten Realms, all that well, they could if they wanted to. There's, there's a lot of stuff that they can do. Especially considering it's the 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons. Like, that's a huge deal. That's great. It gives you an uncomfortable feeling. It would be nice if they put some special sort of decoration on the Gary Gygax memorial that we have in game here. Nothing. And I guess I could do a saga to try to get an artifact, but really want this ring. There are goggles that are pretty good though that I would use. And they can spawn in any chest in 12. Yeah, that person's not doing it. They were doing them, but they're not doing it anymore. That's old old school. For a moment, you're taking it back. Uh, no. And the foul smell. What vile thing have you discovered? Do you realize it's the town dog? Actually, don't have a hard copy of Expedition to Barrier Peak. I need to buy one. To go on to eBay and see if I can find one. I do have, I found at a flea market, an original Ravenloft. This module is from like the early 80s. It looks great.
Okay, so there's no shambling mount. And get the cat. Yes, the cat is here. Yeah, they said they're going to balance past Epic Destinies, which makes me terrified that they're going to nerf the hell out of them and just make them even dumber. I mean, they're already super dumb, right? You pick one strike, you pick one mantle, you pick one moment, although I don't personally even use an epic moment because they suck generally there there are a couple that are good but in the destinies i don't use like action hero uh from legendary dreadnought is really good but you know in primal avatar i never use this and what i'm talking about is so this here, this greater form, this is the epic moment. I can't click on it because I don't have any points. But basically, it only lasts for 20 seconds. You do it every five minutes. That's awful. If it lasted for a minute, that would be okay. If you could do it once every three minutes, that would be a little bit better. But it's just not worth points. And the epic strikes, you do one strike and it puts all the rest on cooldown. And, you know, there's some epic strikes that are really good and some epic strikes that are terrible. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just already super simple. I was a fan of the old system that they had. Where you had to do the destiny spheres and you had um, twists of fate. thought that was a great, sort of very cool system. But nobody cared about my opinion, so... But if it were me, I would have kept them. They could easily add Twist of Fate to this existing system they have. Nothing. So... Awful. How many times have I looted that chest? Three times. It's not looking good. I mean, I guess I could quest, but I have been avoiding doing a lot of, like, really difficult questing on this character because this is the Guildmaster, and I don't want to accidentally, like, die on this character and then have to do the Guildmastering from Land of Lost Souls, you know? Like, even though I play pretty safe, um... And the build is strong. It's, you know, it's, it, you never know. So this was a good pull on the chest, but no artifact. So if somebody decides to do a saga, I guess I could jump in. But I don't see anybody. That's not a saga. That's not. And that's a harbor quest. That's not a saga either. Toxic was killed by a blossoming vine blight. 
Yeah, those blights are nasty. gonna sell all this stuff this is a haggle hat by the way okay so what I should do is go and melt all this stuff down I was able to get my crafting on this tune to 320 which is really good considering it's hardcore So I was able to make uh, a couple of items with that skill level, but I'm still hunting a ring. I just melt everything down because I've been doing so many epics that I don't really need the platinum by selling them so you do get a little plat though when you dissolve They really need to give us some way to like trade in these filigrees that we get because I have like thousands of filigrees that I'll never use. Just dump them into the crafting. Let's see if I have a um writing. Okay, so this is going to replace that. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of questing on, on high-level characters, so I'm able to acquire a lot of stuff for hardcore, but still have not found exactly what I'm looking for as far as my gear goes. You know, some of the gear that she's wearing is still level 5. Like that helmet. This is level seven. This cloak is level five. You know, it's like I need to uh, have a little bit better luck with the loot. But, you know, I mean, I guess if I don't find it, it won't really matter because when Hardcore ends, this this tune will wind up on a server that I don't really play on. I didn't use any tomes or anything like that. Like, it's just... I didn't really, like, invest any resources into this character other than the crafting. So I'll basically just look around at the other servers and see where I don't have crafting tune and then move this tune there. That way if I ever want to play on one of those servers, I would have a crafter already there. And this character's close to cap, so that would be 
pretty cool. Like if somebody wanted to raid. I just have to take a look. I think it's going to be Thalanus. Be the server that I go to for this season, but I might be wrong. I think it's Thalanus though. I think last season I did Orion. I think. But I'll have to check. Okay, this rare is not up. If this rare is up, this uh, little ear here is empty. That's how you can tell. Giant? No, the giant's not. I'll tell you a really good VIP perk that I would want. If they asked me, if they said, so, Mary, what, what VIP perk would you want? I would want the ability as a VIP to make it so that every rare is there on a Slayer Zone. So you don't have to look around. Like, when you load in the Slayer Zone, every you get every rare. So this map has 17. And... If I were a VIP, I am a VIP, but um, then all 17 should be there. And then if you were not a VIP and you joined my party, you could come out here and loot all the chests with me. I think that would add a lot of value to the VIP because it would make people want to sub because that would be really great for gearing up characters there's a lot of slayer zones there's a lot of rare mobs and like for example a great there's rares in the cogs that i've never even seen like the cogs it's so hard to get a rare and they spawn in all these weird locations so it would be really nice as a vip to know that when i go out to the cogs all the rares are there. I just have to find them. And I've done the cogs a lot. There's rares that I've never even seen. I know there's a dinosaur rare out there. I know there's a Warforge rare out there. But I think there's a tiefling rare. They don't really have anything unique in their chests. But they do have crafting mats. So... But this zone, Isle of Dread, you know, it would be really nice to know that the T-Rex is up in the Isle of Dread. Um, and that's something else I could do, I guess. If I can't find an artifact here, I could always go to the Isle of Dread and try to find one there. But honestly, like, I'm... There's a lot of other stuff that I'd rather do since this server is going to shut down. I have my Reaper tune that I've been running. So I don't really play a lot on this tune other than doing guild stuff. So Yeah, my little dryad is no nonsense. She will nuke everything. I think she's related to Larifei. So this is the Reaper Cloak, by the way. 10 points, if you were wondering. It's nice. It's pretty. And the helmet, the little wings. That's the helmet. Hmm. 
I'm getting close to 1500. That's actually pretty cool. So 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons. That is, wow, it's hard to believe. The game is that old. I think it's in a really good spot though, like all things considered. I think Dungeons and Dragons is more popular now than it's ever been. I think we can thank lots of things. Baldur's Gate 3 last year was huge for it. Uh, Matthew Mercer's show, Critical Role, with all the voice actors, uh, also made it super popular. Twitch, YouTube, you know, they have only helped. Especially Twitch. Got a rare filigree. No artifact, though. The struggle is real. It's super difficult to get loot. So 2024 is also going to be a very interesting year. Not only is it the 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons, but there's a lot of really cool video games coming out this year. There's uh, a Star Wars game coming out called Star Wars Outlaw that looks really good. I'm probably going to get it and play it. It looks, it looks really cool. Whether or not it actually is cool, who knows, but... So far, it looks really interesting. So I'll I'll probably get that. I'll probably play that. I'll play any Baldur's Gate DLCs that they put out. I'm not sure if Path of Exile is coming out. Path of Exile 2 is coming out this year. But if that game comes out this year, I will play it. That game looks really, really cool. It's like um, a better version of Diablo 4. And I did buy Diablo 4, but I have not played it. I, I just got totally, just completely turned off by that game. It's actually uninstalled. I don't even have it installed. And I have a season pass. I didn't even use it. The problem for me was that while some of it was enjoyable, it was very sort of repetitious. And I found that the character classes were just too... It's hard to describe, but like my sorcerer was really good at fighting bosses, but sucked at doing at killing trash. Like was terrible at it. 
And so it would take me because the all the landscapes are filled with trash. It would take me like an hour just for, to get from one place to another because my sorcerer couldn't kill everything fast enough. And then in the dungeon, when I would get rushed, uh, she would, you know, my character, my sorcerer would die. So I played a necromancer. The necromancer was super awesome at trash, but sucked at killing bosses. Like, what made me quit was I was trying to kill a boss and I kept dying after, like, I'd be in the fight for like an hour or an hour and 15 minutes and then I would die. And the way that that game works, it's not like you can just go back in and the boss is where you left it. It completely resets the fight. So that hour and a half or whatever is gone. It just completely sucked. Oh, I just lost interest. I don't like wasting time. I don't mind playing a hard game and progressing, but that didn't feel like I was progressing. It felt like I was wasting time. Especially because, you know, like, I changed the build that I used on the Necromancer a couple of times to make it better for boss fighting, and it just didn't help. So. I probably should have played a Barbarian, or maybe like Elon Musk, I probably I could have made a druid. I watched Elon's uh, live stream on X we broadcast um, him playing a nightmare dungeon in Diablo 4 and he was on a druid and he was doing really great damage and it looked really good but I didn't like the, uh, the druid in Diablo 4 so I wanted to play a sorcerer. I wanted to play. But the necromancer was okay too. You know, wasn't terrible. I probably should have played a barbarian, maybe, since they were like really good. Idleness signals defeat. I am no coward. I will not bow. I will not <laughs> I find a way out of this. So yeah, uh, Diablo 4 is uninstalled. I didn't do the seasons. I didn't I didn't care. The last thing I installed on my computer was Fortnite. I tried Lego Fortnite. And I tried the regular Fortnite as well, the, the arena, whatever they call it. Hey, I got... That's great. That's good. Well, I hope everybody's having a nice day. Dense webs enshroud the base of this huge exotic... Oh, it would be nice to get this rare. No, it's not... I like this expansion as well. It's pretty cool. Oh, this is great. Yeah, this is up. This thing hits really hard. Hey, I got a cloak. Getting a lot of stuff that I won't use. I just need a ring. I need an artifact ring. Or goggles.
awful lot of griffins. Why are there so many griffins? I have no idea. Destroy the veil hiding the new plans. The destruction of the Codex of the Infinite Planes. It has released a vast amount of our plane energy, spreading the veil and scattering an infinite number of Oh, this of dude's up. Yeah. This is not up a lot. Mostly. There we go. And nothing. Already full. All right, so not encumbered. Let's go fight the dude. That rare. You have to get the crests and unlock it. Okay, so these crests change locations. I don't see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it can be out there or it's right here. Oh, and I can't pick it up because I'm full. All right, so let's get rid of this. We'll get rid of these armors. That way our not encumbered. I didn't do any of the earlier quests, so I don't have any bags, and I only had a plus five diamond to put in those gloves, so my strength is low. Okay, I've got both crests. Now we're going to get some help, because this dude is a pain to fight. While she nukes, we're going to call our use robot the other robot. Okay. I probably should get Frago, but I haven't. He does some attack that makes you nauseous, I don't know. Try to look and see what it's called if he does it to me again. Yeah, he can hit really hard, too. does some attack that makes you nauseous and then you can't think. Not sure if it's a poison effect or if it's
He's the easiest of these fights out here, though. Dragon is very challenging. Even though I did fight it on my other character, probably wouldn't do it on this character just because I don't want to accidentally die. I mean, I could. This dude could kill me if everything went terribly wrong or if I lagged out or something. But, you know, all things being equal, probably not. And then the Tyrannosaur, he's very tough. Like, probably wouldn't go near him unless I was with a party that had a tank. His bites will do a thousand damage. Like, he reduces your maximum hit points, or whatever it is, by a thousand when he bites you, so it's... And that can stack, so if you, if you only have, like me, I have 1400 hit points. I, I could only get bit by him once, and then that would be it. But this might have something cool in it. Uh, well, we did get five pearls. That's great. This is just, we're just going to use this to feed our sentient weapon. Otherwise, it won't use that. I could use it, but I won't. Waste. I have a short sword that's ready to go. I just don't have enough black pearls to make it. So rather than crunch all this junk, I'm just going to sell it. Check and make sure that there isn't anything in here that I might want. So if that were like plus 15 or something, that would be good. But those, those gloves have one slot, so that's not worth saving. Okay, that looks pretty good. Ah, uh, looks like I already found belt. Yeah, I'm saving all of these to use as food for when I actually find an item, like a an artifact that I want. I'll be able to level it up quickly, you know? Take a look at the LFMs and see. And nobody joined that R4, so. It looks like they're doing Reapers, but they don't have it listed what level. Yeah. 
It's an awful lot of low-level groups, though. And then this dude, this join channel, he has been logged in like the entire event. That's commitment right there. He's got like a computer that's been on the entire event. That that message has not gone away. Not much going on on hardcore aside from me getting denied yeah I just want either a ring or a necklace although this necklace that I'm wearing is pretty good I could use goggles though too. These goggles I'm wearing are terrible. They're just level 10 from Ravenloft. So, do I even dare try that content? Um. I guess I could see how it goes. It's probably a terrible decision. What's the new hireling? Albereth? Albereth. All right, we're going to see how this feels, whether or not it feels like reasonable. And because I don't want this character to be in danger, I'm going to get a lot of buddies to help us out. Like I said, this is the guild master. I don't want to accidentally die, but I'm not sure how difficult this is going to be. If it's easy or not. My gear is terrible, so. That's not a good start. But my damage looks good, at least.
the ground shakes, and the cavern okay. door rolls open. So this, I have to go through a trap. That turns off. Alright, so hold monster is not the right CC. They are a lot of spell resistance, so instead is single. If that helps. A resonant hum fills the ruins as the first rune activates. Another trap. I guess I should have got Frago. Let's see if the death all works. Didn't really even. Probably my gear is just so terrible. Smoke and ash fill the air as an Afridi manifests into the chamber. Hit me with a stun. It's tricky. There's a massive rush of air through the shrine, and then a sudden silence. Okay, dancing ball. Oh, they are just resisting everything. Right again. So I guess I could do the... Bards. That might work. If I can hold the salamanders. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I mean. The gear. It's, it's terrible. Waves of intense heat billow out from the chamber ahead. A group of cultists blocks the passage, leading okay, to the parts. I'm not getting any of them. Wow. It's my DC, I wonder. Oh, 50. That's why. Yeah, I'm not going to get anything with that. <laughs> That's awful. You want to be at like 100. I'm like 50 points too low. So, that being said, that is a waste of spell points to cast it. So, what we want to do is this stuff. Better. Need to make sure everybody has resists. So, it does. Lightning crackles, and you're hit by searing heat. So here, cold at the same time. use Evarts. Try to CC these things. So far, it looks okay. I have to be careful because this ground can do a lot of deep like a lot of damage so as you travel deeper into the cavern you can feel everything slowly Just took a whole bunch go through these i'm going to pull the characters with me we're going to fight everything here put evards down got to get some stuff there it is All 
Alright, so not terrible. Now we fight the last boss. So the reason we're in here is because this has a chance of dropping an artifact set of goggles. Did you think so great a prize would be easily won? Come children, time to be seen. I can hit him with a finger. Nope. Yeah, arcane storm. So that's that. We did it. Let's see. You can feel the rumble of uncontrolled chaos within the eye of Kit. Have any luck? Put it into your pack. Better get the unstable artifact into the hands of more grave universe. Not terrible. Right? We got a diamond. That's cool. And we got an item, but it's not anything that I'll use unfortunate and I'm not gonna reroll that's just dumb we tried those items are kind of rare anyway though so I'm not surprised These other quests are m much more of a pain than that one that we just did. That one that we just did is the easiest. Hey, hi, Cozy. Thanks. Yeah, you like my haircut. I got more than one cut, though. I got a hair's cut, you know? Oh, yeah, so you know that I'm playing DDO. I know I usually don't ever uh, change that. To just chatting, because then I figure, like, people won't find me, because that's such a huge... Um, like thing right they have like hundreds of thousands of people whatever they call it a um a content whatever they call Field it or a, whatever um, a content whatever they call it's it it's either it just chatting or hot tubs but content, because my hot tub broke it's either just chatting or hot tubs but because my hot tub broke it's either just chatting or hot tubs but they think i like your idea i will update it since i am i like your idea i will update it since i am Oh my god, Dungeons and Dragons Online has 73 total viewers across the entire Twitch platform. As opposed to just chatting, that has 478,000. Dungeons and Dragons itself only has 440 viewers wow yeah it, it wait zork the old game zork has 272 the old game zork has more followers than dungeon dragons online how is it even possible why is that doesn't sound right that sounds insane to me Some of these games sound really weird. There's a game called Dungeon Golf. I wonder, it says 24 viewers. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I don't even think they're viewers, live viewers. It says followers. 
Yeah, I don't think there's anybody actually viewing it at the moment. There's a game called Dungeon Alchemist that has two viewers. So, EDO is doing better than Dungeon Alchemist. Dungeons of Eternity has 170 viewers, so that they're beating TDO. Oh god, Dungeons and Dragons Chronicles of Mistara has 1,500 viewers, and I've never even heard of that game. So I'm going to have to look at that right now, right? I don't know what game that is. Dungeons and Dragons. If we can find that game. Chronicles of Mistara. What I have found is DDO is filled like 99.9% .9 of the player base is re are really nice people. Like very cool, very chill. Lots of lots of chill dudes. You know, um so very very small factor of like trolls and tools and dickheads and stuff, but I mean they're there, but it's low percentage. Running a guild with a thousand people, it's usually every season one or two incidents with dickheads and then the rest of everybody else is really nice. Especially now nine seasons in, a lot of the people who come back and play with us are repeats. So most of the most of those thousand people who join are that run with before and who are very cool. Although, I mean, I don't, obviously, I don't know them all by name, or I haven't actually talked to them, but, you know, they, they guild up and they play with us. It was a really fascinating statistic. I looked at um, YouTube, and it's like 97% of my viewers are male, which I think is cool, but it's like, I don't know what to do to diversify my content more to attract more or if it's just that because i post a lot of dungeons and dragons online content that the population of that game is like that you know like but I'm, i don't know i think only probably ssg would know that exact number but yeah it seems like YouTube breaks it all down really, really detailed. So I can tell like the age bracket, where they live, you know, what country they're in. It's very cool. Most of my followers are men who live in America and they're between like 20 and 50, but not always, it could, they might be older. There are some women though. But, so I don't know if that's just because the, of the platform or if, if it's just not interesting or if it's just not something that a lot play this game. I don't know. It could explain why there's only 70 people watching this content and other content that has 1,500 you know, maybe it's just more, more diverse or something. I know Baldur's Gate. People uh, stream Baldur's Gate. I have thought about it, but I haven't done it. 
beyond the first time when I like was making my character because it's a turn based game and it's sort of very narrative driven. So it would be sort of hard. I think I need to watch some people who live stream it to see how they deal with the different narrative aspects of it. Because I'm just not basically sure how interesting it would be unless the, you know, the viewers really love the streamer. The actual content itself, if you're not playing it, wouldn't really make any sense because you're in the middle of a story, you know, so. Whereas DDO is a little bit different in the sense that most people who watch DDO, like play DDO, have care, have TR'd, know what TRing is and stuff like that, so. But once Hardcore ends, I'm going to be looking for other things to sort of stream, so. Let's see. 2024, I'll probably definitely stream that Star Wars Outlaw game. I might stream Lego Fortnite because I really like it. It's cool. I might stream Genshin Impact. I need to try to stream that again because I did try to stream it, but something happened. It kept crashing my stream, so. And then... Um, I do play Lord of the Rings Online, which is the other SSG game, but that's similar to DDO in the sense that I don't think a lot of people are watching that either. I think it's only a few hundred people, so it would probably be hard for me to find an audience. No, I think that's one of the things that I'm encountering with DDO is that there's a lot of people, there's not a lot of people who watch it, and there's a lot of people who stream it, so... The market is, you know, like sort of small. But honestly, I'm not giving it that much thought. I just want to stream. I'm gonna do it anyway. I hope it's interesting though. I plan to get some better gear. Like I gotta get a better headset. I'd like to get a better mic. This mic is pretty good, but I'd like to get a better one. And I definitely need a new computer. If you guys knew the specs on my computer, you'd probably say like, dude, how can you even game a computer that old? Well, I updated the video card. The video card is like a 4060 Ti or whatever. It's like not a super expensive but it's good. It's, it's new. Just the processor and the RAM is old school, so I need to get a new one. Get a new one. I'll get a couple new monitors. Like, what's that? I think my camera is okay for now. So let's see, I have 30 seconds left on my potion. I don't think any artifacts drop out here. But it would be nice to find a Fate Twisted chest. That's a guaranteed piece of loot. Oh, that was it. Oh, I still have a potion, it looks like. 20% probably.
I don't like the red caps. The red caps freak me out. Okay, so the singing sword is not here. I wonder if the tree is here. Yes! I don't think I've seen this yet on this character. Legendary victory. If he's here. Oh my god, Hersum is here. That's rare. It's hard to find there. Well, that's cool. It looks like this dude's here too. That's cool. Yeah, our damage looks really good. It'd be really cool to find a Fey Twisted Chest though. Okay, so we'll go check the snow. I'm gonna make myself invisible. Mount up. Maybe we don't aggravate everybody. They'll know we're here, but they won't like alert. Within the distance of just a few short steps. So if you ever want to ride through a zone and not pop a red alert. Make yourself invisible. Sudden change in the climate surely wasn't natural. Hey, I got some stuff, but nothing that I'll use. Give away those thieves' tools. If anybody's watching and you're on hardcore and you need thieves tools, I have a bunch. Send them. Oh. Shit. There's like a displacer beast behind me, right? Among the I don't think I've seen this giant tree. yet. Giant oh, that's right the there. Creature split effortlessly and he's not there. House. Fortunately for you, the branches form a ramp for the village's earthbound visitors. Brown one would be right in front of us, and she's not there. And the ghost. Yeah, the ghost is right there. The ghost is immune. Get him with force damage. Immune to my acid. Going to ignore everything and just ride. In the midst of the swamp stands a curious hedge. Do you search for some sort of Oh tiger lilies here, that's great. You cannot find any sign of who built this. Nothing. No fate, no fate twisted chest.
All right, we'll warp back there, and I'll be right back going in. So for those of you who didn't hear, the um, DDO producer letter came out, and I talked about it earlier. They, um, they completely snubbed Hardcore in that letter. And so now we're hoping that that letter was just, you know, released quickly after they summarized all the things they plan to do for the year. But they say very explicitly that it's not a complete list and that they may change it. So hopefully uh, Hardcore just got like left out because, you know, they plan to do it. They have done it. So they just didn't write it on the list of new things they were doing. Hopefully it's not like a legitimate snub. But they did say something concerning that these new dynamic events that they're implementing will be replacing the new hardcore season. So what would be season 10 is going to be replaced by this new dynamic event, right? That's sort of terrifying. I'm not excited about that because the first dynamic event that they did was a complete stillborn piece of trash. Like the Illithid event. Not that the result of the Illithid event was bad. It, it actually was those four quests, those extreme challenge dungeons were really good. Um... It was just the event itself, like, that sucked, because it, you know, and I have a video about it on my YouTube channel, if you are interested uh, to watch it. It was my experience at that event. And sailors come to this thriving temple to offer their prayers to the god. But I basically, you know, like, highlight the fact that for an Illithid invasion, it was neither full of Illithids nor an invasion. Like, it was just a very, a very shitty sort of riding the coattails of Baldur's Gate to, you know, generate some sort of a buzz in order to get people to log in and just normally quest because the invasion, all of the, the big, my biggest complaint was it's an invasion. So how are the, all these Illithids hidden in the most obscure recesses of these Reaper dungeons? What kind of invasion is that? That doesn't even make any sense. Like, they should have been landing in the streets, in the market, eating the kobolds and, you know, causing havoc among the, the coin lords. And we should have been able to fight them right in the middle of the market. And... Just responding to somebody asking me a question. Okay, so, just asking me about my build, so I was telling him the link. I don't know if it's a viewer. If it is a viewer that you can actually type in exclamation point build and it'll take you it'll pop up a link and then just click the link. It'll take you to the forum where the where it's uh there. So I have a link to the build that I played in Hardcore, and then um, the one that I play normally on Sarlona. They're, ver they're very similar, but I just had to alter it a little bit for Heroics for Hardcore. It gives you an uncomfortable feeling.
We're on the hardcore server now, and I'm trying to find artifact ring. Not had any luck. And it's pretty slow on the server, at least in epics anyway. Heroics are jumping, but they're always jumping. It's a lot of LFMs for heroics, but... Not much for my level range. Yeah, he's going, he's looking for loot. I would jump in like a, you know, like an epic elite loot run group if I saw one pop up. For a moment, you're taken aback by the sprawling pit and the clouds. Technically, if I got the gear off my other character, I could do our fours, but not really. The mood to do reapers on two characters my one character that i've been doing reapers with i think i have 850 or close to 900,000 reaper xp so i definitely have earned a spot on the boards i think i'm in the top 20 i'm not sure exactly where i should be able to keep that spot in the top 20, which is cool. That's all right. That's all I can really. I don't need to be in the top five or anything like that. I don't. That's too much work. Those people have played a lot. There are people with like, you know, close to one and a half million Reaper XP. And that's a lot of questing, especially I have not TR'd. So I've pretty much done all my first time bonuses. And I'm not in the mood to TR. Like, it's a lot of extra work for hardcore. So I'll save all the resources that I have and just take them to Sarlona. Use them for my main. I'm really close to triple completionist on my main on Sarlona. Uh, I only have like, I think two, uh, two racial lives to do, I think, and then I get racial completionists. So I'm, like, really close. But I'm not in a rush, also, because it's not like I can't do anything at the moment. Like, I guess if I want to solo R8, it would help, but, you know, I can solo R6s fine, so. One of the reasons that I really like Hardcore, because it, like, resets everything, you're on a first life tune, you have nothing, you're playing with people in the same situation as you, you're just relying on your skill. It's like a class boat race in sailing, you know, like you, you're stripped down, you've got nothing but just your raw skill. And, you know, see how far you can go, like it's great. It's why I'm here every season, I, I love it. Not that I don't like the live game, I do. It's just, you know, as somebody who's really close to like what people would say is complete, being triple completionist, um, you know, it's, there's just no rush to finish it and all the content is reasonably easy. You know, especially if I do something like R4 or R1 even, like it would be super easy, so. when they introduced the archetype for Acolyte of Skin, which is a warlock archetype, they must have seen that the warlock damage in heroics was so terrible, something that I had been saying for years. It used to be god-awful. And so when they released Acolyte of Skin, 
the archetype, they buffed the damage. So now the base Eldritch does 1d8 and the Pact does 1d6. So now, for a long time, I I played Warlock. And then when they just ner they nerfed it, I switched and started playing Sorcerer. And then they nerfed Sork. So then I went and played my Druid for a while. Then I played a Favored Soul. And now I'm back on Warlock because they finally, you know, like unnerfed the damage. Put it into a decent enough space where it, you know, it's playable. In Heroics, it was where the real problem was, and just like, it, the damage was so god-awful in Heroics. So. Yeah, you had to really like kiting because you'd be doing a lot of it. But, you know, compared to other things like DPS, alchemists, or druids, or sorcerers, or favorite souls, the damage is still low. You know, when I do R4s, I'm never the top kills or the top damage. It's always the sorcerers and the alchemists. But it's fun. Warlock's probably my favorite. They were my favorite in Baldur's Gate, too. I played a warlock there. I'm going to try to find a ring. Oh, I need to get stop that. Stop. Yeah, we got really lucky uh, last night. There was a massive storm that hit New England, and I thought my power was going to go out a couple of times, but it didn't. We have a generator, even if it does, but it's not, you know, it sucks to lose your power. Even if the generator would, like, keep the refrigerator going and stuff, it's still, like, you can't, you know, keep the computers on. At least with the generator that we have, so. I know that some people get, like, the industrial strength diesel generators that can power their whole house and they can, you know, keep doing things as normally even if the power goes out, but we don't have that. Ours is a lot smaller, so. it It's enough to keep the refrigerators going while the power is out until they get it back on. I think that a lot of people lost power in New, in New England yesterday, so. But then, today, it was like 55 degrees out. So, I mean, it was really, like, felt like a spring day. I mean, people say global warming sucks because it's you know, it probably, like, everything's broke, right? But I'll tell you something. Having 55-degree weather in Boston in the winter is really, really nice. Usually it's it's friggin' freezing here. Like, usually it's way too cold. A flock of griffins have made the shipwreck into their eerie. 
they are not pleased to see you. Alright, so the chest is up. If you guys don't know how to how to tell, you just tab target. If you see it, you can see it, right? And you just have to take out the two griffins. I think I did, but I don't see the other one. Yeah, and then it's underneath. I'm basically just tab targeting. Uh, interactables. I have a key set up to do that. Which I highly recommend doing. Setting a key to tab the objects is really useful. So Dungeons and Dragons turned 50. It's old. Hey, the bear's here. I think probably one of the... it It's an interesting sort of a thing, right? I should run a poll on my YouTube channel, but I think like from my perspective, one of the most amazing things that came out of Dungeons and Dragons were the invention of the Beholder, right? I just think that's such a great creature. They're so interesting and unique and it's like, how the hell did somebody think that up? It's so weird. You know, it's not like Tolkien wrote about elders, right? He wrote about dark elves. He wrote about wizards, dragons, but he didn't write about beholders. So I think that they are, in my opinion, one of the best contributions to our you know like the cultural stuff that we have from that game really cool I think one of the other things to a bunch of Dungeons and Dragons if we were going to talk about 50th anniversary one of the really interesting things I think that that game did for a culture is prove beyond a shadow of a doubt being a nerd is cool. Right? Like prior to, like when I was a kid and I used to like read comics and and play D&D &D with my friends, I people used to make fun of me. It was not cool, but now it's cool. And I think we have Dungeons and Dragons, you know, to thank partly for that. Not all of it, obviously. I think video game culture in general has a lot to do with it. But D&D &D definitely helped you know, make really sort of what would be considered geeky and nerdy concepts and things very like people say now when they have a birthday that they're leveling up i mean that's you know that's straight out of video games and dungeons and dragons <laughs> so i think it's really cool too right like the my the the child version of me is like yeah, it's great that the world is kind of like it is now when it comes to this stuff because, you know, I knew I was right. I knew it was cool. I knew they were wrong calling me a nerd. Now, who's the nerd? I mean, I'm probably still a nerd, arguably, but 
socially awkward nerd. But that's okay. Right, that's okay, because AI is here to save the day. Right, we're all gonna have AI girlfriends and boyfriends. I really want to try the one that they just released. A couple of streamers have done reviews of it. It looks like Pixar made it. You can get a digital girlfriend or a boyfriend that looks like a Pixar character. So, <laughs> I might try that. Hey, Cord, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. I was just talking about Dungeons and Dragons 50, it's 50, 50th anniversary, and there's probably going to be a lot of celebrating this year. <laughs> Doing your guild raids? Yeah, that's nice. In your guild raids, you're one of the tanks, right? On Argonessen. Oh, my backpack. Okay, junk. I know, so you saw that. Yeah, I talked about it. Uh, in the beginning of this stream, I read the producer letter and then went over all the points and talked about it. And uh, yeah, I'm not happy about it either. I feel like they snubbed hardcore. Oh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. In Star Wars, I used to be a, um, a raid tank, but I also had other characters that I could play if, like, if we had an extra tank, but somebody else you know, wanted to or wasn't available to play a certain role I could fill in. Most of the time, I tanked. I like tanking. Tanking is sort of what I'm good at and what I do, but I don't really do it in video. They are not pleased to see you. I guess I could, but just haven't. But yeah, I'm hoping that. So there's a couple things about that dynamic event that's going to replace hardcore for 2024. The first thing that I brought up, the point was that the first dynamic event that they gave us, the Illithid event, sucked. So to tell us that you're replacing Hardcore with another dynamic event when the only one that we've seen so far sucked is sort of upsetting. And then the other thing is, like, Hardcore, while it's only, you know, 60 to 90 days, is extremely busy. And I know it makes them a lot of money because everybody who participates on it is buying and interacting and re-rolling chests and all, all sorts of stuff. I myself buy a ship and fill it full of stuff, you know, like so. Dense webs enshroud the base of this huge exotic tree. Just one of those things, like. I'm hoping, hoping that they revise the roadmap for 2024 and they add uh, you know at least a redux of season 4 you know if they don't want to give us a new season at least give us a, a, our season 4 redux let people earn the season 4 horse was really nice uh, the season four out the cloaks were really nice, so. So I'm hoping that 
hardcore didn't get, you know, like, legitimately snubbed. Because what I was saying before that ad rolled, um, which I don't have any control over that, by the way. I myself can't stand the ads. Like, yeah, I don't know if I can shut them off completely, but uh, I was saying earlier about the producer letter that it seemed like they kind of made it a point of saying that it wasn't final and that they're going to, you know, they they can modify it as they go forward. So it may be that they just didn't add the stuff about hardcore. But it does feel like a snub. And that's not cool considering that, you know, while it's not the entire DDO population, we do get like a few thousand players who really like hardcore every season. So it's, you know, I think it's important to respect the players that like it and want it. And, you know, some of the people running the... Running a guild with a thousand people in it, I talk to a lot of different players, and there are some who just play hardcore. But they don't play on live, so. I know when I read the letter earlier today, I was upset that hardcore was snubbed. I was very sort of like, why is it not listed here? <laughs> why are they, you know, I. The dynamic event is going to replace it. I mean, we we took a look at it on stream. I won't do that to you guys again because we did it earlier. But the first dynamic event that they had was awful, right? I mean, I like the challenge dungeons. I like those extreme challenges, but... The event itself was not good. So. I don't think it's a good idea to cancel what they what is a money maker or something that wasn't very well received. And, you know, apparently they took feedback from the Illithid event, but they didn't mention the fact that a lot of people gave feedback that the event sucked. So, <laughs> I don't know. If I worked for them, things would be much different. 